Okay, today's topic is the F word, and it's a very controversial topic, and a lot of、uh, neo pagans and witches、um, vehemently disagree with what I'm about to talk about, and that's fine. But I would recommend that you suspend disbelief and just at least consider what I'm saying. Uh, unbiasedly, and try it out for yourself and see if it doesn't make your life and your magic much more effective. Now, the F word that I'm describing today is forgiveness. <laughs> We have、uh, in our understanding of metaphysical and magical principle the concept that that which we Conceptualize and that which we internalize is manifested as our experience in the world. So when we internalize resentment and、uh, we carry resentment around, then we have there is no big mystery how our situations and our circumstances will reflect. Those、uh, discordant feelings that we harbor. What happens is when we hear about the word forgiveness, we misunderstand and we we think that that、uh, we are making ourselves well. There's there's several ways that you can that that, that people will conceptualize this, and in, in my opinion,、uh, they they are all errors. At least, as according to how I am using the word forgiveness, one very popular way of using forgiveness is, okay, so you want me to forgive?、Um, that means that I'm supposed to just condone、uh, abusive behavior and be a doormat and let everybody walk all over me and turn the other cheek and just let myself be be victimized. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. And we're going to get into why that's not what I'm talking about, but let's just take these one at a time. That's one misconception as to what I talk about when I'm saying that forgiveness is that that we're condoning abusive behavior and that we are allowing ourselves to be victimized and not standing up for ourselves and standing our ground. Okay, so that's one erroneous、uh, perspective. Another one, it's、uh, oh, I see. So you want me to forgive, which means that. Like、uh, I, I'm supposed to be like an evangelical Christian, where we where we're all just miserable, miserable sinners anyway. So what does it matter, right? No, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about either. It's not that that we're all just th- that we're all just a、uh, grade B product, and therefore we should just you know forgive each other for whatever reason. We're not it, okay. And then another one, another one that that I see a lot of is oh I see. You, we're, we're, it's as if as if、uh, we're saying, okay, you've really wronged me, but I'm enlightened now, and I will condescend to forgive you because I'm above you and I'm better than you spiritually, and therefore I'm going to do you a favor and forgive you. That is not also what I'm talking about when I'm talking about forgiveness. What I'm talking about with forgiveness today is that any time we allow ourselves to take in and harbor resentful, negative, attack, attacking thoughts about other people, we are in effect hurting ourselves. Remember, everything we do, we do to ourselves. So if you hate somebody and you wish them ill and you just and you can't say anything but but negative things about them, how much is that hurting them compared to how it's toxic to you, right? So you're walking around with all this poison. It's like I, I love the the line that that、um, that holding a resentment and not willing being not willing to forgive is like taking poison and hoping the other person will die. And that's exactly what it's like. You're holding on to all of this psychic poison, and you're hoping that that it's going to hurt them, right? So, let's just take a moment and just and just try this out for a second. Notice what you're feeling right now in your body. Just notice how you feel. Notice 
you know, where there might be tension or maybe you feel you think you feel fine, whatever that is. Just notice how you feel. Just take a little bit of an inventory about, you know, your body right now and your emotions. Okay, just kind of get a sense. All right. Now, think about the person that you have resentment. And the one that just came up is fine. It doesn't, it's just an exercise. So that one, the one that you're thinking about right now, that person, what would happen if you visualized them being bathed in pure white light and you saw them as being regressing now in age little by little and seeing them getting younger and younger within this white light until they are an infant. Now, when you visualize them as a little infant, helpless little infant bathed in white light, how resentful are you? Do you still hate them? If you do, that's fine. But most of us have a hard time resenting the little infant, even though sometimes they're, they're annoying when they cry. But we, we have a hard time holding a grudge against a little infant. But that person is an infant. In the eyes of the goddess, in the eyes of the universe, just a little kid, just like you are, right? Doing its best to get through this very confusing world, this very confusing life. And the last thing that is going to help them is more psychic venom from you. Now, I want you to now take a look at yourself and see yourself bathed in the white light and see yourself getting younger and younger and younger until you see yourself as a little baby. Now, how hard is it to resent yourself when you realize that you're just a child being thrust in a very confusing world? So, if you are able to let yourself off the hook, maybe you can let this other person off the hook. And conversely, if you're able to let this other person off the hook, Maybe you can let yourself off too, because you're just two little babies, right? Okay, now come back into the here and now and see for a moment if even just that teeny little bit of an exercise had any difference in the way you feel right now. Do you feel at all different? Okay, just notice that. Okay, now we're going to stay with this person. I want you to... In your mind's eye, see this person and think about whatever it is that they did to you or said about you or whatever it was. It could have, I mean, maybe it was just vicious. Maybe it was awful. Maybe it was abusive. Maybe it was sexual abuse. Maybe they raped you. I don't know what it was. Just whatever it was. And just say to yourself, this person was in so much pain that this was the best that they knew how to do. Do you feel at all compassionate towards this person? Because remember, how we act to other people is nothing compared to how we feel about ourselves. So if this person did something horrible to you, imagine how vicious they are to themselves. And ask this too. My resentment of this person, is it A, helping them? Is it making their life better? B, is it making my life better? C, is it making the world more peaceful and more loving? All right? Now, if you've been honest with yourself, you can realize that there's absolutely no good reason to hang on to this resentment. It just isn't serving anybody. Remember, to get rid of this resentment and to forgive this person, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. It's a very selfish thing. Because 
that's power that you're robbing yourself of by holding on to anything that's tense. And resentment is, by definition, a tense emotion. Hatred is a tense emotion. It's not doing you any good. It's not doing anybody any good. The idea that you need to have revenge, that you need to attack, that you need to, all of that stuff is, is not helping. It doesn't help you stand up for yourself. It doesn't help you be protected. In fact, it does the opposite. It puts you in a very vulnerable position because the more hatred you have within you, the more hatred you attract. So the, the, the more hatred that you are creating within yourself, the more hatred you are attracting. And the deeper you repress that into your deep mind, the more powerful of a result you will get. Does that make sense? So there's absolutely no good reason that anybody's ever been able to give me as to why it's helpful to hold on to resentment. Now, I understand why we do it. And don't get me wrong. I understand. It, it makes sense to me why we do it. It's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an erroneous sense of, of self-preservation and self-protection that, that, I'm, that if I hold on to this resentment, if I hold on to this hatred, then I won't ever be victimized like that again. I understand that, but actually the opposite is true. You become more divinely protected when you forgive. Now, I'm not saying that to forgive means that you're going to move in with this person, that you're going to have lunch with this person, that you're going to even have anything to do with this person. You do not have to call this person. You do not have to talk to this person. It's absolutely okay to set healthy boundaries absolutely okay to set healthy boundaries and to protect yourself physically. But I'm talking about protecting yourself emotionally, protecting yourself emotionally from yourself. And that has to do with letting go, letting go of everything that is unlike perfect love and perfect trust. And uh, there's an old saying in the Bible that, that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. What that means is, uh, from a magical perspective, is that karma knows what it's doing. The universe works whether you help it or not. I mean, it doesn't, it, you know, gravity doesn't need your vote. The tides don't need you to push them. The, the, the planet doesn't need you to, to, to spin it. I mean, the, the, the earth doesn't need you to push it around the sun. You do not need to help. In fact, most of your helping is not helping. It's interfering. So what it means to say vengeance is mine is that the law of cause and effect knows what to do. And it's not out there to punish. It's there to teach and to bring balance and equanimity to the universe. So, um, you know, a, a very low level understanding of that uh, law is, oh, well, they'll get what's theirs. Well, yes, they will, but that's not so that they'll be punished and, and that, the, that there's going to be more pain in the world. They'll get theirs in that they will ultimately learn their lesson. They will ultimately come to terms with themselves and they will ultimately be healed. And that will be a beautiful thing. But it's not your job, nor is it my job to teach people a lesson. And that should be very good news because life is hard enough just to make my own decisions and to learn my own lessons, let alone be uh, saddled with the responsibility of making sure people learn their lessons. So really, it's none of our business. If somebody's wronged us on some level, on some level, we had a part in it. Now, I know that if you were a little child and you were abused, I'm not blaming the victim. I'm not saying that you had it coming. No, 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 no. But on some level, there was some place deep within your psyche that you were there to learn something from this situation. And if you don't want to believe that, that's fine. How about, let's put it this way. It happened. You can't change it. So you can either grow from it or you can regress from it, but you cannot stay stuck. You can either get more tense about what happened or you can get more relaxed about what happened, but the status quo will not stay there. You, there is no such thing. There is no static anything in the universe. The universe is always in motion. 
So it's up to you to decide whether you're going to let go and forgive or whether you're going to hold on and basically die to who you are. So when people do uh, get, get into doing a lot of magic and a lot of, um, you know, practical magic, you know, they want to get their finances cleaned up or they want to get their, um, well, the finances. I mean, look at the world market right now. Look at the, the financial markets all through the world. Finances are a wonderful barometer of what's going on, both in a, a person's personal life and in a, a global economy. Okay, so there is a huge need for global forgiveness right now. And that is, you can see it in the financial world, and you can also see it in the political world uh, as far as the wars and, and, uh, and things like that. So what, um, what can you do to make the world a better place? What can you do to bring more prosperity to the earth? And what can you do to bring more prosperity to you? What can you do to bring more peace to the earth and bring more peace to you? What can you do right now to become a beacon of light into the world and bring more light into your life? Forgive, forgive. It's, it, it seems like it's like, it's like getting a shot. It seems like it's going to really hurt, but it's over before you know it. Right. And it's actually different than a shot in that regard, because a shot actually does hurt for a second, but forgiveness, once you do it, it's really, it doesn't hurt at all. It actually feels amazing. So now I want you to take that person again in your mind and just say, you don't have to forgive them, but I want you to do this. I want you to say to yourself, I'm willing to forgive this person. I'm willing. I'm not saying that you are forgiving this person. I'm willing to forgive this person completely. Okay, does that not work for you? Fine. We can take it one step back if that doesn't work for you. I'm willing to be willing to forgive this person completely. How about that? I'm willing to be willing to forgive this person completely for the sole purpose of making my life more comfortable, more prosperous, more peaceful, and more happy. And the more peace, prosperity, and happiness that I experience, exponentially, the peace, prosperity, and happiness of the entire universe grows. So, do you want to be part of the solution, or do you want to be part of the problem? I mean, this is what it's really down to. It's really up to you. If there's, if you don't like the way the world is right now, and you're still holding resentments, you have no one to blame. You can't say, oh, the, po- the political structure, and oh, the, the economists, and oh, the, all of this. You can't blame anybody but yourself, because all that you are responsible for is your side of the street, right? You and I have so much more power than we are willing to believe that, we're, that, that we have. We have so much power that if we realized it, we would just freak out when we realized how powerful we were. And part of the reason why we hold resentment has nothing to do with the person that we're resenting. It has to do with the fact that we on some level know That if we were to awaken to who we were, we would see how much power we have and we would have to almost assuredly die to who we thought we were because the jig would be up. Our, Our whole way of operating in the world would have to change because the whole game that we've been running our whole lives, this whole role that we've been playing, these all these victim roles that we've been playing would be annihilated because we'd realize, wait a minute, we have a lot of power. See, because if you're victimized in this world and you, and you hold on to resentment, you are, in a, you are placing yourself in a position of powerlessness because you are giving all of your power to hatred. You're, you're tensing up. But if you are victimized in this universe and you forgive your persecutor, then you are in a huge, huge advantage because you have all 
how, how do we say that the, the magic works because of relaxation? The more relaxed you are, the more powerful you are, the more powerful you are to, to affect change in the world. So if you forgive, then all of that, all that means is that you're relaxing, you're relaxing. You are at peace with this person, which means that you are in a position of ultimate power to protect yourself from anything like that ever happening again. Right. But you it's like you can't forgive with the idea of, oh, OK, I'm going to forgive so that I can get powerful so that they can really get it so that I can really give it to them because that's not forgiveness. But people do that. It's weird, isn't it? People do that all the time. But no, we're here to um, I mean, you, you could take it one step further. After you've been willing to be willing and after you've been willing to forgive and then after you've said, I, I, I forgive this person completely, what would happen? I mean, and believe me, I know I have been I've been abused and I, I've been victimized in ways that many people probably would never believe in my life. But if we can take a moment and not only forgive this person, but to wish for them to be happy, to wish for them to be at peace, to wish for them to succeed in the world. Do you know what that's doing? That is creating a healing on the planet that is more of a sacred place than Stonehenge, that is the most sacred place in the world. Every time you forgive an enemy or a perceived enemy or whatever you calling them and you and you bless them from your heart and you call upon the 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 highest powers of the universe and the earth to create a a space for them to to find peace in whatever way and and i'm not saying that you're supposed to, to to direct that or you know but just to just to to wish for them to be happy to wish for them to be to to be loved to wish for them to have peace Okay, when you do that, you create sacred ground. Every step you walk is sacred ground. Now, that is what a wise man and a wise woman do. That's what we do. It's not. And again, no offense to the Christians, because, you know, I love you guys, but, uh, eh, you know, it's just not my thing. But the the thing is, is is that the, the Christian evangelical movement has sort of co-opted a lot of these concepts that are a lot older than Christianity. So anytime we we are are are, de- are dealing with something that smacks of, of of one of these principles that we hear of an evangelical Christian using, we shy away from them because we don't want anything to do with those people. And I understand that. And again, I'm, if if I'm I. I'm not bashing the Christians, but I, I am saying that if you have a a, a, um, a hard time with forgiving your your enemies and and blessing those who persecute you because it sounds a little Christian. Know this that it is so much more ancient than Jesus. It is so ancient. It is a very rudimentary druidic principle that 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 which you are you create. You cannot. You cannot do anything to anyone but yourself. So if you want a surefire way to clean up any mess in your life, you root out those resentments and you find what they are and you be very, very honest with yourself. And you know, if, if, if you're having trouble in any area of your life, go back to the, to, to your journal or, or to your, your grimoire, or whatever you're, you're using, get a sheet of paper and just write out, the, the the people I resent are, and you just start writing and don't edit. And if it, even if it doesn't make any sense, even if you don't think that you have a resentment and the name comes up, you write it down and you make a list and you go through each of those people and you tell, and you say, I forgive this person completely. I forgive this person completely. And you mean it and you wish for them and you see them bathed in, in that light and you see a smile and a happy face on them and see what it does to you. See what it does to you. And see if those situations in your life don't just clean up all by themselves. You want to talk about spell work. You want to talk about magic. This is what we're talking about. This is alchemy. This is transformation. You're taking shit and turning it into gold. Because, you know, 
we know what it's like. I, I've been I've been down those roads. I've slept at those motels. I know what it's like to 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 seethe and to hate and to and to and to and to wish the worst could happen. And it's understandable. I mean, if you've been abused, if you've been beaten, if you've been raped, if something bad has happened, if somebody's gossiped about you, if you've been betrayed, it's so understandable. I'm not saying that it's not understandable. What I am saying is it just doesn't work to hold those resentments. It doesn't work. So I invite you to take a week, to take this next week and to, uh, for just just take you know a few minutes a day and make those lists and see who it is that you that you hate. Just be honest with yourself. It's human. Just you know, and and it's not anything to be embarrassed about. It's no more embarrassing to um to 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 wash away an unforgiveness than it is to wash away you know body odor. I mean, it's just like it's just normal. It's just it's a normal thing. I mean, you got to brush your teeth. You got to take a shower. You got to forgive. I mean, it's it's just hygiene. It's spiritual hygiene. It's no big deal. But we fall so in love with our resentments that we allow ourselves to get so filthy, dirty within. And then we wonder why our aura smells bad. <laughs> we wonder we wonder why nothing works for us. Well, that's why. It's why, because we're carrying around a sack of shit and we're wondering why it smells bad. You know, you've got to clean it out. You've got to do it. Uh, it's, it's imperative that if you want to be happy, if you want to be effective, if you want to be a powerhouse, if you want to be a mover, if you want to be a shaker, if you want to be a spiritual giant in this world and you want to make a huge difference and be on the forefront of, of um, the healing of the planet, the healing of the environment, the healing of the world, the healing of the political structures, the healing of all of this stuff that we are, uh, the, our financial situation, all that stuff that we're, that we're dealing with right now, then you got to start with yourself. You know what I'm saying? You know, bless his heart, Michael Jackson, who just died the other day. He's a, he was a beautiful person, and I always felt bad um, at some of the stuff that he was going through because he, he was going through a lot of stuff. But he was very clear about that with that song, Man in the Mirror. And, and, and that was, um, it was a very, um, very important lyric for, for a pop song that if you want to make a difference in the world, you got to look at yourself. And that's the only power that you have. And that's all we've got going for us is, is, is we've got to clean up our side of the street and we've got to do it now and we've got to do it on an ongoing basis. And until we do, we have no business complaining about anything. And once we do do these things, we'll have no reason to complain about anything. So it's been delightful spending some time with you. And I hope that we get to spend some time together very soon. In the meantime, much love and many blessings. 